So today we're going to talk about why these two sequences of footage look different and explain the workflow I'm using in DaVinci to use the ACES color space, which is kind of what TV and broadcast uses. Let's talk about some technical nerd stuff. So before we dive into what makes this footage look different in DaVinci Resolve, what we're going to do is practice the standard workflow for something you might see in Adobe Premiere. So I have that sequence of footage in my timeline here in Premiere. And what you would normally do is you'd go down to the little piece of paper down here and click on adjustment layer. And we'd add an adjustment layer based on the size of our sequence. We'd make sure it covers all of the footage. Now from here, what you would do is go into your Lumetri color tab and you wanna leave the log space and enter a final look rec 709 space. So you'd go to the browse, find your LUT that you're gonna be working with. I'm just gonna blow through this really quick. And generally speaking, I will start with the generic Sony LUTs that get us out of the log space. So I'll just pick this first one right here and from there, it looks pretty good. Footage looks passable. But imagine if you were working with a much bigger project with multiple cameras, multiple shots, maybe some VFX. This is why I am switching to DaVinci Resolve. Let's go over to that now. So what you're looking at is what you first see when you jump into DaVinci Resolve for the very, very first time. Now, I'm a Premiere user at heart, so I typically like working in the edit tab, very similar to what we might find in Premiere. So first to enter the ACES workspace, there's two methods of doing this. The first I'm gonna show you is the overall project workflow. So we're gonna import some footage into our project and we're gonna do that by navigating to our folder wherever that footage is saved. I know it's right here and I have this tutorial footage. I'm going to drag this folder of footage into the master section right here and that will save the folder structure. I don't want to change the frame rate. So what I'm gonna do is bring in the footage just like that, select all of it, right click, clip attributes, make sure I set these frame rate to whatever I want it to be, which is 23.976. You can also adjust this in your project settings down here in the lower right hand corner. All right, we need to enter the ACES workspace, which is pretty much the foundation of this tutorial. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the little cogwheel, the project settings, and we're gonna go to our color management. Now, if you just have one camera, I recommend using this workflow. It's only one type of camera, it makes it pretty easy. So we're gonna change the color science from DaVinci YRGB to ACES CCT. Then what we're gonna do is change our output transform to R on our keyboard to Rec 709, click save, that's it. So now if we select all this footage, right click, create new timeline using selected clips, we can make a new timeline, we'll call this ACES. And we can see here, the footage still looks gross. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to select all of our footage. And if you check out this tutorial right here, it gives you a further explanation of what the ACES workflow is. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go to ACES Input Transform. And because I mentioned earlier, this method typically works best when you have just one type of camera. So I know I'm shooting on a Sony S Log 3 S Gamut 3 Cine. That is the log profile that I recorded in. So I can select that and bam, that footage is out of the log space and it looks pretty sweet if I do say so myself. So as I scroll through, we can see that all the footage that I was showing earlier looks less gross, more saturated, there's more contrast in the scene. And what I like about this workflow is that I don't have to have multiple adjustment layers, especially if my project gets really complex and I have to have a lot of different layers, VFX shots, sequences, etc. So I'm gonna take a couple steps back and we're gonna go through the other method that I've also been using. So we're back to where we started. This is what DaVinci will look like when you first open it up. Now, I am a Premiere editor, so I'm gonna go back to my edit tab, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring in that footage into the master folder, 
So navigate to that folder, drag it over to the master section. We're gonna click on don't change, same thing, right click, clip attributes, make sure that we set this to the desired frame rate we want, double check that in our master settings, frame rate there, cool. So if you do not want to have your overall project work in ACES, but you want to have select clips work in ACES, here's the alternate workflow. You're going to right click on all your footage, make a new timeline. We'll call this ACES once again, click create. So now we have our footage and we are still in the log space. It looks pretty desaturated and gross. We need to leave that. So to do that, we're going to go to our color tab. So in the color tab, and if you are a Premiere user that is aware of ACES, this is generally what you'll see in other tutorials. This is what the color page looks like. Now, what I like about the DaVinci Resolve workflow is we don't need layers upon layers of adjustment layers to create our overall grades on top of our footage. Instead, we can put things into groups. And if we need to adjust clips individually, we can do that too. So. Right here in the middle of our screen, we can see that we have a sequence of clips. That is all the clips in our timeline. So if we select and hold shift, click all of these clips, make sure all of them are selected by having them highlighted, we can right click and we can go to add into new group. And we'll call this Sony S-Log3 tu Aces Tutorial. Cool. So now we can click OK. And this window right here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's this word clip right here. And there's a drop down menu that will give you some options. Normally, this is not here. But now that we're working in a group, we can access this selection. Now, if you don't see that, you can move this window out and you'll see this here, the same word, but you can also see these four dots and that represents the same thing. So we can go to our clip and adjust the color of just the clip, or we can go to our pre group, which is everything before the clip. And that affects the entire selection that we have in this group. See group here. So now what we can do is we can go to our little magnifying glass in the top right hand corner and we can look up aces. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but it's a little bit more complex, but it gives us more control. So again, we know that we shot this footage on a Sony a7S III and S-Log3. You need to make sure that if you're working with this workflow, you have to know what your log space is. So in the input, we're gonna go back and type in S for Sony and scroll down to our desired log space. So S-Log3 Gamut 3 Cine, select that. Now it looks gross. However, we want to bring that into the ACES workspace. So we'll go to the output transform. We'll hit A on the keyboard and we'll change this to ACES CCT. Now your footage might be different depending on if you're doing VFX stuff or live action footage. Most of the time for live action footage, you're going to be using ACES CCT. Don't worry about these other ones for this tutorial. So select ACES CCT, and now this shot looks like we're back in a log space. It looks pretty similar to what we had without this node here. If we turn that off, it's still a log space, but it's just a little bit different. To turn off a node that I have selected in my color page, I can just hit Control and D, and that will turn off the node. Just a little fun fact in case you wanted to know some extra tips and tricks. Anyways, let's go to our group post clip now. So this is basically affecting all of the selection in the group, but it's everything after our color grades. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring the aces transform, but we're going to put it into the end of our node right here. Drop it right there. Nothing's happening because we have not changed our input or our output yet. So we're going to go to our input and we know that we were just outputting ACES CCT. So this input should be ACES CCT. And now it's going to look weird and gross. 
but our final output destination is Rec 709 for YouTube and broadcast and whatever else. So we'll hit R on the keyboard for our output, select Rec 709, and that footage looks so much better. And the reason why I like this workflow is it allows me to be a little bit more granular and precise with my color grade based on my groups and clips. So now let's say I wanted to affect all of my clips with this previous node right here and just hypothetically bring the exposure up by a lot, you can see the entire selection of this group just got brighter because we're working in the group post clip. Let's just undo that. However, if I jump to my clip, the middle part, and I work with this node right here, now I can say adjust the contrast, add a little S curve there, and it's not affecting any of the other clips. Just for posterity's sake and demonstration purposes, I can go to the color boost and set this to a negative value so it's black and white, but we can see that the following clips are still in full color. So that is the reason why I am switching from Adobe Premiere to DaVinci Resolve. The ability to get a little bit more precise with my color grade and my favorite part is that I don't need to have a giant folder of LUTs with different cameras and different log spaces. I have just a simple unified pipeline of color for my videos in DaVinci Resolve, and that is the ACES color space. If you would like to learn more about that, check out this video once again on why I like using ACES for VFX and other video related things. But I will leave this video here. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Comments, questions, and concerns are down there for that as well. And I will leave you with one final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some goodbye, my friends. Bye.